a coin, a symbol of probability, luck, and fate, of an uncertain future, 50-50. But what if I told you there was a way to make the probability that this coin lands heads to be one in a thousand? I'm Chris Horst. Let's look into the vortex. Suppose you woke up in a room, and this room had a blue door. You have no memory of how you got here, but a voice calls you over the intercom and says you are in a psychology experiment. You consented to be knocked out and placed in a room based on the flip of a coin. If the coin landed heads, you would be assigned a random room from 1 to 1,000, 999 of which have red doors, and only one of which has a blue door. But if the coin landed tails, you would be put in a room with a blue door with zero chance of being put in a room with a red door. Now guess whether the coin landed heads or tails. You guess tails, and of course, you're right. The assignment of the room was based on the flip of a coin. But because you knew that you ended up in a room with a blue door, you realized that there was very little chance but the coin landed with the correct face to assign you to a random door. This is an example of the generalized anthropic principle. The idea that you can learn something about the circumstances surrounding a situation without actually knowing anything about what led up to that situation. And the only thing that you know about it is that you're there and what you see. Now there are a lot of versions of the anthropic principle but the ones that are valid are examples of Bayesian reasoning. Bayesian reasoning is a mathematical method for determining how reasonable it is to believe something based on information that we have. Let's look at the equation using the example that we just went through of the coin flip and the colored doors. On the left side of the equation, we want to calculate the probability that we flipped a heads given the fact that we saw a blue door. On the right, our first term is the prior probability, the original 50-50 probability of flipping a heads on a generic coin. Next, we have the likelihood. That is how likely we are to get a blue door if we flip a heads. Now remember, heads is the one where we're assigned a random room. So the likelihood here is one in a thousand. And finally, we have the model evidence, which is the probability that the door is blue. Now we've seen the door, and we've seen that it's blue, so that number is 1. But it turns out it doesn't matter, because we don't just want the probability that the coin landed heads, we want the probability that the coin landed heads versus the probability that the coin landed tails. For tails, the equation is the same, except we replace heads with tails. So we take the one for heads and the one for tails, and we divide them by each other. So let's put in the numbers. The prior probabilities for heads and for tails are both 50-50, or one half. Let's put that in, and since it's the same in a fraction, it cancels out. The likelihood of getting a blue door if we flipped heads is one in a thousand, and the likelihood of getting a blue door if we flipped tails is one. So we simplify that, and we see the probability of having flipped a heads versus the probability of having flipped a tails is one in a thousand. What's this have to do with having a deep understanding of the universe? Well, the anthropic principle can apply to a lot more than just coin flips and psychology experiments. Think back to the time when the only planets we knew about were those in our solar system. And back then we included Pluto, so let's include that and say there are nine just for today. And we looked around and we thought, how amazing is it that this planet has all of the things it needs to support life. It's so ridiculously improbable that it seems nonsensical to entertain the idea that it happened by chance. Now we've now seen many thousands of planets around other stars, but even before we knew that, we could have guessed that there were many, many planets in the universe. Let's simplify the question by supposing there are only two possibilities that there are only the nine planets in our solar system, or that there are planets around almost every star in the universe. 
Which of these is more likely? Well, we can use the anthropic principle to make a guess. If there are only nine planets, that is nine chances to get the right conditions for life. That's ridiculous. There's no way we would roll all the right dice to get all the right probabilities to have all the factors in place so that Earth, one of the nine planets, is habitable for life. But if there are a billion times a billion planets, that's another story. If fate looked throughout the entire universe for one planet that was good for life, looked here, nope, 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 for almost an infinite amount of time and almost an infinite amount of chances, there would be a planet where the conditions were right for life. That's the anthropic principle applied to the big questions of life. There are many others, some of which we'll talk about in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment. And for more glimpses into the vortex of science and philosophy, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.